you know, whether you agree or not. This video uh, and Destiny, the whole franchise, it always has been about faith. You know, it's a driving factor in the Final Shapes campaign. It's it's something that it's coming to question in Beyond Light, you know? It, ever since Destiny 2 started, we've been questioning our role as Guardians, our faith as Guardians, you know? Gaul invades the tower. Gaul invades the last city. And captures the Traveler and everyone's questioning why did the Traveler just let that happen why did we, why did it do that and then it 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 awakens everything happens um, Forsaken happens Kate dies we call into question like why did Kate have to die and then we start questioning and beyond light our trust in the in the light our trust in darkness you know like do we think that it is worth dedicating all this time to a silent god are we going to uh, devote ourselves completely to darkness you know it's it's all about faith and then witch queen happens that faith is completely shattered by the traveler giving the hive the light yeah lore wise they were chosen before us and i guess sabathun's exorcism is the catalyst to them once again being chosen but ghost didn't exist back then you know i don't think it's clear because like technically the fallen were chosen and we haven't seen any fallen guardians you know, any Elixney. We haven't seen any of those. Um, we haven't seen... Well, in the lore, we technically have. Because the Ammonite were able to use... Right? Was it the Ammonite? Um, they were able to use the light. But they didn't have ghosts, so they couldn't resurrect. You know? At least to my knowledge. Yeah, I haven't played a game that calls faith into question this radically. And, you know, if you just, if you just play Final Shape again, and you pay attention to Zavala's story, it's all about a man who has completely lost his faith in the Traveler. Because his story is not resolute, it's not fixed, you know? Uh, like, yeah, his relationship with Ikora is fixed, but he still has this hole in his heart you know and it's eating away at him to a certain extent he's in an opposite place compared to the dark future timeline you know the dark future lore book where he finds himself lightless but in the dark future he doesn't really have that much faith in the traveler he he becomes like a proto speaker forces the light back in you know he's not willing to accept stasis even that far into the future the great machine and its lies 10 years bro 10 years we fought for the light done more than anyone has ever done in the history of destiny but it stays silent only speaking when it needs help 2017, the Traveler gives us a vision to get back our light. 2022, it gave our enemies the light. I don't care if the Traveler chose them before us. After everything the Hive did, it allowed it to happen. The Traveler could have said no at any moment. You're telling me the Traveler couldn't recall those ghosts? Like he did for Rulk? 2023, it stayed silent. It stayed still, letting the witness carve a path into it. 2024, it guides us through the labyrinth of the Pale Heart. Gives us weapons and visions to aid it. But 
it's only helping itself in that way. You know? Like, I guess the whole universe is at stake, but think about it. The Traveler's only defending itself. And yet, the Guardian who fought bravely in fights that nobody could imagine taking on. Like, we, we fought Crota, we fought Oryx, we pushed back the Shadow Legion, we destroyed the Black Heart twice now, and prevented its resurrection twice. And yet, the Traveler stays silent. You know, and at the end of Final Shape, of course, it, it continues to stay silent. After everything we've been through, 10 years, it couldn't do us one favor and brought back our ghost. Not once. Travel is not that great. Turns a blind eye to pain, suffering, and injustice to the whole universe. According to the visions of the Traveler, it might not be able to understand reality, which I think is just an excuse, you know? I can feel the Traveler's presence radiating from this object. Memories and experiences, emotions and ideas blooming in my mind. I see so many cities, so many peoples basking in my light. They study me. And in their discoveries, they come to understand the universe. I am a blueprint for them to follow. A canvas upon which the mysteries of the universe are written. These little gardeners are such careful stewards of fragility. But then... They begin kneeling. They plead. Beg. Demand. I do not know what to do. There is confusion, helplessness, guilt. There's nothing more. What does this mean that the great machine does not wish to be worshipped? I don't know if I'd interpret it that way. It may be more a lack of frame of reference. It doesn't understand reverence or worship. But that also doesn't mean it can't learn but that it's still trying to understand us. Or... maybe it never will. Does that invalidate faith? I do not know. It provides a question. And I suppose it is on me to ponder the answer. For the truest answers lie within ourselves. They've terraformed worlds, created life, created the ghosts, revived us. And when we served our purpose, it leaves us to die. Like, yeah, the Guardian Creed. You know, bravery, sacrifice, death. But still, it's like... It's to it was totally capable of reviving our ghost, and it didn't do it. It cost us Cade again. I know Cade chose that, but doesn't change the fact that it was something that he did because the Traveler forced his hand. Arguably, the Traveler has been with us every step of the way. Even though the collectible Traveler impressions are up for interpretation, they kind of pretty much confirm that the ghosts are just fragments of the Traveler's being. Like, aspects of it split into millions of pieces. Probably billions. Um, which, now that I mention it, actually brings up an interesting parallel between the Traveler and the witness the witness being a collective brought together as one in darkness you know and the traveler being one divided into a collective let's be honest despite everything the traveler only ever spoke 
when it benefited the traveler, you know? And it stayed silent pretty much any time when it was safe. Like that lore tap where Roka's convincing the ghost of giving him their power. But then presumably, uh, it is the traveler that speaks through it and says something like, uh, Adversary, this one is not for you. Another instance where the traveler really holds its own interest in no one else's. You know, I just think of something interesting where like Final Shape is the culmination of the Light vs. Dark Saga. Yeah, I can't help but feel like all it did was turn me against the Traveler. You know? Like, it's been 10 years. Right? And you're telling me the Traveler doesn't have the power to push anyone back out i mean like it blew up gall it blew up it shot out to the witness like it it i know it was an act of desperation but i'm sure it's enough power to cleanse itself from hive and taken and yet it just it sticks with it you know i don't have an actual resolution about this it's just that the fact is that I no longer trust the Traveler as a benevolent figure in Destiny's universe. It doesn't make any sense to me now. I think Zavala's arc is something that really resonates with me in this expansion. Because by the end of the expansion, he doesn't believe in the Traveler. Just like how I'm saying. Because he's... Just constantly mentioning about how it's a silent god, you know, it doesn't, it's not almighty, it's not all powerful. I don't know. It, this almost makes you feel like it's like, I'm, I'm like, I'm seeing Superman through the Zack Snyder lens, you know? It's kind of like this atheistic view, I guess. But it, it's... Because, like, you know what it is, right? You know what the Traveler is. But at the same time, you see it. And you see how it's acted throughout the throughout the narrative. And you just can't help but think, like... It wasn't there for us. It wasn't there to help. Despite... A decade of us doing stuff for it. Um, but, yeah. It's clear that Destiny's has always been about faith. Really don't know what else to say. Like, I feel like I have to talk about this with somebody else. Um, so like, feel free to add on to it. Or comment or whatever. Like, I'm not trying to engage my farm. I'm just genuinely curious what other people might think about this. Because... In... This whole saga, I've sort of been like, like, yeah, obviously the Traveler's the good guy. But now I'm just thinking where it's like, you know, is it? Do you want that to be in control? Because now it's got both light and dark. You know, we don't know to what extent that's going to change everything. Because like we know, we know that the veil is all darkness. And the Traveler used to be all light, but now it's both light and dark. So where does that leave the veil? Because the, uh, if you remember at the end of uh, Lightfall, Ghost is like, it feels like the Traveler. And, uh, you know, it's kind of weird where that leaves it. Because what does that mean? Right? So there's still a lot to explore there. Because, like, yeah, I guess we know what the veil is now. But we don't know what it is, you know? Like, cosmically? Is that, like, a counter-traveler? Is, is that, like, an anti-traveler? And... Is it an enemy to the traveler? Like, the way it was used, it was used to... The, in a way that hurt the traveler. 
Um, but can it be communed with? Can it be talked with? Or is it just a tool? Like a paracausal tool. It, it, I don't understand it. I mean, it's got the similar color to prismatic. So maybe it could be related to that. But it's not clear whether it's a good thing or not. But that's about it. Yeah. My first Destiny lore video. It only took me 10 years to do it. So. Later. You can go now. You can leave. You're sitting there. You're staring at the screen. I told you to go. You can leave now. Bye. Bye. Bye.